Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Talalipop and you might have noticed I've been doing a few videos on the Trek Marlin series lately and I compared the differences between the 2020 and 2021 versions in my last video but I realized I haven't done a comparison between each of the bikes with each other. So in this video I'm going to go over all the main differences between the Trek Marlin 4, 5, 6, and 7 covering all the things that will affect how these bikes handle on the road and on trails. The Marlin 7 did have some big changes in 2021, so I'll mention both the 2020 and 2021 versions of that bike in this video. I'm going to keep this organized by focusing on a different component at a time, such as the drivetrain, brakes, or suspension, so you can clearly see what changes between the models. But before we get into it, I'm going to give a quick background on the Marlins. The Marlin bikes are basically Trek's entry-level mountain bikes, and from my experience with my 2020 Marlin 5 and researching the other bikes, they seem like a great way to get into mountain biking on a budget. That being said, Trek does offer different lineups that are more oriented towards mountain biking, like the Roscoe and Excalibur series, but I can talk about those in a separate video if anyone is interested. And one last note, to make things simpler, I'm only going to be focusing on the men's versions of these bikes. For those of you that do not know, the women's versions of the Trek Marlin bikes are actually the exact same bike as the men's versions, but they offer a curved frame design in the extra small and small versions. They also come in different colors and have a more comfortable seat, but basically if you get a women's Marlin 5 or something like that in a size medium or above, you have essentially a men's Marlin 5 with a different seat. Additionally, I'm only going to be focusing on bikes offered in the United States, as Trek has an international version of the Marlin 4 that is a much cheaper bike, but I've done a video on that already, so please check that out if you're interested. Okay, let's get into the comparison. I'm going to start by talking about all the similarities between these four bikes, so we can focus on what actually changes between them later. The main thing shared between these bikes is the frame. Every bike in the Marlin series uses Trek's silver alpha aluminum frame with internal cable routing. I'll throw up a picture of the specifications on this frame, but there's too many to go through all of them in this video. All the Marlins also share the same rims, tires, pedals, seat post, seat, stem, and handlebars. I won't go into all the details on these components since if you get a Marlin, you're going to get these no matter which one you choose. With that out of the way, let's talk about what you actually have to decide between when getting a Marlin. The things that differ between these bikes are the suspension forks, brakes, grips, and drivetrain, which consists of the shifters, derailers, chain, cassette, and cranks. Now that might sound like a lot, but I'll try my best to simplify it in this video. Let's start with the suspension fork. All the bikes come with coil forks, but the Marlin 4 comes with an SR Suntour XCE28, which is the same fork the Marlin 5 comes with. The 6 upgrades this to an SR Suntour XCT30 that has a hydraulic lockout, which means you can lock the suspension in place to ride faster in flat areas. The 2020 Marlin 7 upgrades it even further to a RockShox XC30, which also has a lockout. The 2021 Marlin 7 improves this further with a RockShox Judy with a lockout. All of these forks have 100mm of travel, and as you upgrade higher you will see better dampening on the trail and better components that will last longer. Next are the brakes. All the bikes come with disc brakes with 160mm rotors, but the Marlin 4 uses Tektro mechanical disc brakes, while the Marlin 5 and 6 use the same Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. The Marlin 7 in both years uses Shimano hydraulic disc brakes. Hydraulic brakes are better than mechanical disc brakes since they require less maintenance and work better in all weather conditions, and the Shimano hydraulics cost more but they do come from Shimano's Altus group set which is pretty reliable. Then we have the grips. So the Marlin 4, 5, and 6 all use the same Bontrager XR Endurance Comp grips, which are comfort biking grips that have extra support for your palm. The Marlin 7 in both years upgrades this to the more trail-oriented Bontrager XR Trail Comp, which has a cylindrical design. However, grips can come pretty cheap, so this isn't too big of a deal, and both work perfectly fine. Finally, we have the drivetrain, which is the main difference between these bikes. 
Starting with a general overview, the Marlin 4 and 5 both mainly use a more budget Shimano Tourney drivetrain, which has three gears in the front and seven in the back, and thus is more oriented toward commuting and road biking. With this 3x7 drivetrain, you have 21 different gears and can easily find the perfect gear for going the speed you want to go in flat areas. The Marlin 6, on the other hand, uses mainly a Shimano Altus drivetrain, which is one level above the Shimano Tourney, but this time there are only two gears in the front and eight in the back. This simplifies the drivetrain more for the trail, and though you only have 16 gears to choose from, if you're more focused on trail riding, this should be plenty. Next, the 2020 Marlin 7 upgrades this further with a Shimano Altus 2x9 drivetrain, giving you some gears back which are going to help for uphill riding. The 2021 Marlin 7 makes a big upgrade to the Shimano Dior 1x10 drivetrain, which is pretty much Shimano's entry into serious mountain biking drivetrains. A lot of specific parts in these drivetrains are different between bikes, but that is mainly because the Marlins use different Shimano group sets. Therefore, going over every single part in these drivetrains would be a bit overkill, but I'll list some specifications about some parts and talk about them now. The shifters progressively get better and are different depending on how many gears the specific bike has, but basically as you move up the line you will get quicker shifting and at the top Marlin 7 model you have the ability to shift multiple gears in one go without the drivetrain failing, which can be helpful in fast paced trail riding scenarios. The cranks progressively get better as well, but the main changes between them are the amount of teeth on the gears available, which just translate to faster and easier pedaling as they get more expensive. The last component I'll talk about is the cassette. The Marlin 4 uses a 14 to 28 tooth 7 speed cassette, while the Marlin 5 uses a 12 to 32 tooth 7 speed, and the Marlin 6 uses an 11 to 34 tooth 8 speed. The 2020 Marlin 7 has an 11 to 36 tooth 9 speed, and the 2021 model has an 11 to 46 tooth 10 speed cassette. As you might notice, as the models get better and more expensive, the amount of teeth in the smallest cog in the cassette gets lower, while the amount in the largest cog gets larger. Basically, the less teeth on the smallest cog translates to quicker pedaling in flat areas, while more teeth on the largest cog translates to easier pedaling uphill. And with that, I've covered all the components that make the Marlin 4, 5, 6, and 7 differ from one another. I'll give a bit of a summary on these while I show a table that simplifies what I talked about, since I went over a lot of things. But basically the Marlin 4 and 5 are intended for beginner mountain bikers who still want to have some fun on trails and have a good time learning the ins and outs of mountain biking. But that being said, I personally do own a 2020 Trek Marlin 5, and I believe it can be used as your main trail riding bike if you are on a budget and cannot spend, you know, $800 or more on a bike right now. The Marlin 6 is $100 more than the Marlin 5, but it does go one step above the 5, and is probably a better entry-level mountain bike to get if you have the money, since it does have that 2x8 drivetrain, which is more trail-oriented, as well as the hydraulic lockout. Then the Marlin 7 is clearly the top of the line, and I would definitely recommend the 2021 version over the 2020 model if you're looking to go on trails more often, since for only $40 more you get that Dior group set and 1x10 drivetrain, which is really good. But that is all for this video. If you enjoyed and this helped you out, please leave a like and subscribe, and leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for me. But besides that, thank you so much for watching, and keep biking.